I wish I wouldn't have done it. You say something and then not necessarily at that moment, but the next day you wake up and you're like, man, I wish I hadn't have said that or I hadn't behaved that way. So so your personality has changed from when you were a drinker to now not being a drinker. So what do you think are some of the consequences of you not drinking? Like how has your personality changed? I'm uh, more understanding and I listen better. I, you know, when you're drinking, you don't pay attention to what the other person's saying. You just want to say what you want to say. And you're narrow minded. I'm more open minded and I'll listen to what the other person has to say before I make a snap judgment. Those types of things. I would never mean to anybody. I just, I wouldn't listen. I would say what I wanted to say. I was, it was all on my side. And, you know, you're stubborn <laughs> to a fault. So those types of things. Seems like you're now responsive versus previously when you were reactive. I would say that's true. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do a definition of uh, reactive versus responsive. I'll just Google it right now. And I know that this is, well, this is one of the things that we coach folks on in Project 90, our Stop Drinking community. Um, Let's have a look here. Responsive versus reactive leadership. I'm just doing a Google search here. So the reactive individual makes a snap judgment. The responsive individual considers the whole picture framed, excuse me, considers the whole picture framed against the company's uh, values, strategies, and tactics. So someone who is reactive is stuck in uh, their emotions. They let their emotions get the better of them. Um in the heat of the moment, something comes out of their mouths and then a split second later, they're beating themselves up inside and regretting what they've just said or the action that they've taken. Reactive behavior is immediate and occurs without conscious thought, like a knee-jerk reaction. It's often driven by emotion where you may find yourself lashing out, shutting down or fighting. Typically, you behave like a victim of events and are not fully in control. So I'm just reading here from a Uh, a Google article. Have you recognized that you've been like that sometimes, Robert? Yes. Absolutely. I I would agree with that. I, not all the time, but I would, yeah, when I was, uh, if I had a couple uh, neat bourbons, I, yeah, I would behave exactly like that. Who with? Who would you be reactive with? Have you got an example or an anecdote of when you identified you being reactive? Oh, I probably did it with my daughter, depending on what the circumstance was. Um, she's she's a really really good student, but I I if if I got on her for like a grade or something, or you know why didn't she do this or that? Um, sometimes. Um, not really well i hate to say i i was short with our warehouse manager and he's been with the company for a long long time in fact he's probably gonna end up being a partner with me but uh yeah i I wish i wouldn't have done it you know you you say something and then not necessarily at that moment, but, you know, the next day you wake up and you're like, man, I wish I, I hadn't have said that or I hadn't behaved that way. So um, sometimes with my mother, if she asks <laughs> rhetorical questions and she's in her 80s. So I need to be more patient and understand um, that there are circumstances that uh, dictate that. I should be way more patient and understanding of the other person's situation. Well, let's read the definition of responsive, at least on this Google article. It says, on the other hand, people who are responsive rather than reactive are generally calm. They are easygoing and they don't get stressed easily. They take time to think things through, are generally good at planning and looking ahead. They are considered with their responses. They have empathy. Most importantly, they don't take things personally. They can look objectively at situations and not get caught in the emotion of it. They can take ownership, responsibility, and accountability for all the good and not so good things that occur in their lives. 
They generally have a positive outlook on life, have great relationships, and are well liked. So, what comes up for you when I read the definition of responsive? Uh, well, I believe in the last 126 days, I've uh, probably really turned the corner. It's uh, it's amazing. Well, what you can do when you're you're more focused and you you don't have a a drug affecting your behavior um i know people have been manipulating their mental state for you know thousands of years but uh, when you step back and you understand that i mean you give you give it up the alcohol but i didn't know a lot about what alcohol did to your brain I, I just thought it made you behave poorly. I didn't know that it was uh, it was that powerful. I'd, we learned a lot about dopamine and the different levels of, I want to say like, I was shocked that a bourbon or two would give me a bigger dopamine hit than taking my daughter to a world series game like 10 times more and it i was i was like wow um so i'm i'm super happy i people notice as well my mother notices my daughter notices uh, my sister my brother doesn't drink either so i think part of that um people don't want to be around you when you're when you're drinking and that hurt my feelings. I, um, I didn't feel good. And I, you know, I, I felt like I had no choice. I, it was something that I had to do. It was necessary. And I, I'm not going to go back there again. Like I said, I, I didn't drink for five years. I'm not sure why I picked that bourbon up, but I did. So there's, there's really no sense in going backwards and beat myself up over it. Another thing I've learned in this program is uh, you, there's not much you can do about the past. You need to move forward. So, and we, you know, we're reading, letting go and, and um, learning a lot of new things. So, and even at its 61, I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks after all. Huh? An older dog, not an old dog, just an older one. 